1855, this, this building saw the evolution of telephones and color TV and internet and wars and confederation. Like, it's like there's been countless events here, I think. My name is Wolfgang Gimbel. I'm the founder of Lock Street Brewing Company. And uh, I'm also the founder of, of a small business that uh, repurposed these buildings and uh, kind of brought them back to life. So that gives you a better sense of what, like the, the doors have been filled in and these, uh, these ugly octagon windows in there. And we replaced the balcony, made it original and put in the original windows. And so that was what the facade looked like when we got it and then we ripped it off and put our new facade in. That's what it looked like when we got it. It's just a demolished mess. The previous businesses, specifically at 15 Lock Street. Back in 19, I think it was 1916 when Prohibition first came in. Uh, it went from being a bar to being an ice cream parlor. Uh, they had a variety store in here. They also had a pool hall. Uh, I think the pool hall might have been in the basement. And that's how they maintained the business and kept the kept the building operational during that period of time. Uh, of course, then back when uh, Prohibition ended, and then it turned back into the old drinking establishment that it always was. I think they even called it the ice cream shop, and it was just where you could get moonshine out the back door, and it was all obviously off the radar or under the table. But uh, So there's some important you know, alcohol-related history here. But everything this, this building's done since the beginning, all predicated on someone drinking something, it seems. And uh, if you look at early photos of the building, it even says fresh lager painted on the side. So it was meant to be that there was a brewery here. There was lots of uh, rum running that used to happen out of Porto Luzzi, where the boats would line up. They'd fill the boats up with booze, and it, I would think it was taken down to about Rochester where it was brought in. Uh, and there is a story about one of the Port families losing a family member being shot by customs uh, when they were trying to escape. It was the Wellington Hotel until I believe somewhere in the 20s or 30s and then eventually it became the Lions Tavern. Um, and so early on it was just one of the first hotels. There was the Austin House Hotel across the street and this hotel. This building is I think the second oldest building in Port Luzi. The Lions Tavern was for sure a bar and there were some uh, rooms available for use. <laughs> uh, you know, it's got a legendary history, I think, depending on who you ask. All the workers uh, needed places to stay. Uh, there was teams of horses that used to draw the boats up through the canal system. Uh, and those individuals had to have places to stay and eat, of course, and usual Friday nights uh, drinking and Carrying on, I think, was part of the <laughs> part of the scene down here, even 100, 200 years ago. It was certainly well known as being a, a festive place of entertainment. The bank building actually opened in September of 1907. That was originally the Sterling Bank of Canada. That operated uh, until I think it was in the mid 40s, and then it became the, the Commerce Bank of Canada. And in 1961, that amalgamated with the Canadian Imperial Bank of Commerce, which is the CIBC. And that operated until sometime into maybe in the 80s when the bank actually closed here and they moved up to the North End Plaza where Bugsy is located. This building here, uh, it had several different businesses in it. They had, I think there was a bike shop in there for a while. Uh, there was an antique shop operated out of there for a while. Uh, then they used it as the office for Port Place to try to sell their units. Uh, when that all closed down, of course, now it's Balzac's. And that's the way we see it today. The building itself and all the pictures I've looked at and seen over the history, the building itself has stayed exactly the same. When I bought the buildings, I just wanted to have my little retail shop and be rent free. So I wanted to have other tenants that would pay market rent. And ideally I would own the building and, and not pay rent. Um, and Balzac's was the first person I approached, Deanna Olson, the original founder of Balzac's. I just really wanted that brand as, a, as an anchor tenant of sorts. And then I'd have my active lifestyle store and then I really wanted a bakery or a bistro or like a farm to table culinary experience. 
they exceeded all of their projections right from the beginning. I knew they roasted their own beans and all their dairy products were organic and local. All their food products were local. And I just liked that, that attention to detail. And they also did everything like old European French coffee makers. And with Lock Street having a vision of doing things also Euro and a little bit from the old school, I, I just thought the brand was, was perfect. I'd love to see them stay, I think. I'd love to see them stay. And um, you know, someday I hope we can maybe expand their outdoor patio space or some someday be able to integrate our beer garden in the backyard with, with their backyard space so you can have a little bit more of an integrated experience. But uh, goals, I, I just wanted to be running. So we're almost ready to put our last piece of equipment in that's been missing since I bought the place, like a real key piece that is on my wish list. And once that's in place, we'll have all the things that I dreamt of having in the beginning, like the canning line, the extra capacity for fermenting, the, the right type of chilling equipment, actually being fully functional and doing what we're supposed to be doing. It is properly haunted, 100%. And uh, I've been told that at least a few people have been terminated in this space. All the bodies are around here. People ask if this place is haunted, and I, I'm not a weirdo ghost person. But, you know, you see those shows on Discovery Channel or whatever, and you think these are all just crazies. Well, when I first bought the building, I had stuff stored on the third floor, and my retail store was open, and I had a t-shirt press that I had plugged in up there. It's just the only place I had storage. and. My son was just born, so I'd often, you know, be busy being a dad. And then once he was asleep, I could sneak back here to get caught up on work. And on at least three occasions, I was working by myself at night. And at that time, there was only one door in the whole building, and it was at the front with a big latch on it. And while working upstairs, I would hear, I would hear doorknobs turn, and I would hear doors open and close, and I would hear boots walking down the hallway, and just. I know this sounds like like I'm making it up from a movie, but until you experience that yourself, you don't you don't believe it. I tell people it's about the idea of time. And I like to think that we're in the business of time, not purely in the business of making beer. So we want our product to be the thing that you enjoy while you're either enjoying your time or celebrating time. So I'm thinking of all the occasions where you're embracing this nuance of time, sitting by the fire, sitting on the dock at your cottage, catching up with your buddies when you're home from school, celebrating a birthday party. Those are all moments in time that you celebrate and we often enjoy a beverage in those times to celebrate. And so I wanted our brand to reflect those moments and uh, and so then when you start any business, whether it's a, a film studio or a brewery, you have to find some way to give something to someone that, that they're excited to give you their money, whether that's a product or service. So you have to find, it, can't, it has to be more than just saying, look, I make beer, you should buy it. Or, hey, I make commercials, you should get me to shoot your commercial. Or I sell cars. Lock Street is, uh, we say we take our time so that you can enjoy your time.